Bell's Brewery and New Belgium Brewing welcome a new member to their team focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm News 8 Digital Anchor Luke Laster here from the Wood TV Live Desk. Joining me here this morning is Courtney Simmons, the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion there. Courtney, good morning. Morning, Luke. Thanks for the opportunity to connect today. You bet. So before we get rolling here um, on the specifics of, of this new role, tell me a little bit about your background. Sure. So I'm from Grand Rapids, born and raised in Grand Rapids, which is funny. I, I never thought of myself as a, a local only person. I love to get out and travel, but I've always been in Grand Rapids. I live in Kentwood now and fancy myself a Grand Rapids resident. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, I've, I've been in the, the, we like to call it the West Michigan trifecta. So uh, food service, I started my career there and then furniture and now craft beer. I like that. I've never heard that, actually. That's a good way of putting it. Um, so, you know, being a West Michigan native um, and being in this new role, what excites you the most about it? I think what is really exciting about working in craft beer especially is that I am a, buddy, a budding beer drinker, I'll say. I'm learning to really appreciate beer. But what I've always appreciated is the experience in, in the craft community, right? We have really cool local craft breweries and pubs like the Eccentric Cafe here in Kalamazoo where people come to hang out. We sell a product, but we also sell an experience. We create and we cultivate community. Craft beer has been really, I think, overt about the fact that we are a place where community is created and that craft beer welcomes everyone. Um, and I'm excited about being a part of saying, yes, we do that and we have work to do. And I want to be a part of, of, of doing it a little bit more intentionally. It kind of expanding on that a little bit, yeah. what excites you most about being a part, not only of just a brewery here in West Michigan where, where, you know, craft beer is just so popular, but being part of one that is so significant, so story like Bell's. Yeah, so I think what's so great about Bells and, and the broader, you know, our broader business is that we are organizations that are deeply passionate about our people, taking care of our people. And when we do really good work taking care of our people, when we do right by them, when we make sure they're cared for, then the people that we're caring for can go into their communities and they can do really good work locally, right? Whether that's in volunteering, whether that's showing up in meaningful ways, or if it's just creating a space that is more welcoming to others that are different from themselves. And so, again, I think, you know, we have this product, we create community, and at Bells, we're, we're a human-powered business that is deeply passionate about investing in humans. We do a much better job of creating not only a community within our organization, but making sure that that extends into craft beer and, and well beyond our industry into the communities that we live, work, and play in. Talking about some of the roles there specifically, or the, the initiatives with this role, what are you spearheading here right out of the gates? Sure. This year, I'm really focused on understanding what's happening inside of our organization. Like I said, this isn't new for us. We have a long history of, of caring about diversity, equity, and inclusion, about allowing people to be their whole eccentric selves in the workplace. And we have opportunities to understand that when we say we're inclusive, who, who might be left behind in that? And so I'm really interested in understanding and building up our internal networks. Specifically, we have a DEI coworker council, which is a collection of our coworkers that are responsible for helping to advise and inform on our strategy, helping to collect insights from the business, business and bring them back to make sure that we're not missing perspectives when we're making decisions. So there's that internal component of making sure we really truly have an inclusive environment for everyone, that people aren't having disparate experiences with inclusion. I'm building my team, which I think is super important, but I'm right now a team of one with a whole army of volunteers, which is so important, but being able to bring in some dedicated resources to make sure that we're doing this work as well as we possibly can. Those are a couple of things that we're prioritizing. And another piece of making sure that we're fostering that inclusive environment is just really making sure that we're continuing to build on the learning and the competency, especially of our leaders and our people so that they're able to do this work. I think one of the things that comes up often when we have conversations about DEI is a perception that people, you know, I think we're in a really difficult um, context in the world today where we're probably just as more divided than ever. And people are really afraid to make mistakes. And so I often hear the perspective, you know, I just don't want to step in it. I don't say, I don't want to say the wrong thing. And as humans that are imperfect, I think we can be assured that we'll say the wrong thing, that we'll make mistakes. And so cultivating a culture of practice over perfection and seeking to understand and really uh, 
uh, managing our defensiveness, right? I'm a good person and I don't want to make mistakes. I don't want to hurt people. But if someone can tell me like, hey, you did this thing. I know you didn't mean to. And I can say, wow, thanks for helping me understand that. Like if those are a few things that I can accomplish this year and continue to focus on and then in the next several years, like it'll feel like a win. So Bell's Beer obviously has a very large reach, but with uh, New Belgium recently acquiring them, that reach is even further. And you're mm-hmm. responsible now with both of these very significant uh, breweries. How do you plan to juggle that and um, push your message forward there? Yeah, thank you. It's been, uh, it is a juggle. (laughs) You know, the role has expanded pretty quickly. I started in November with Bells, as you mentioned, and then took on that additional responsibility for DEI on behalf of all of our brands in February. So the good news is that we'll have a singular strategy for the organization. A lot of what both organizations, I think what's really cool about the two organizations is that New Belgium has had this really good high level a structure and governance, really good ideas around how this strategy might be developed and some important elements of strategy. While Bells has had really good grassroots employee engagement and coworker deep involvement in the DEI work. And so I think there's a really excellent opportunity for us to meet in the middle to take that structure and governance and that passion for developing strategy from New Belgium and apply it to some really cool programs that we already have at Bells and make sure that we're bringing coworker voice into making those as good as they can possibly be and re- reflecting the experiences of all of our coworkers. Again, since you're from this area and from West Michigan, you know, I mentioned it before, but you know how much this area values their craft beer. Being in a role like this, um, how does that motivate you to want to be able to better serve the people, not only the people here in West Michigan, but even beyond it to make a true impact? You know, I think that um, not only does our community value craft beer, uh, but our community really values, I think, connections. And and frankly, I think the other thing that's true of our community is that it has been, I don't know if this is directly answering your question, but our, our community has been really segregated, right? There are a lot of pockets of um, community members that don't intermix and intermingle. And, and I think I'm really passionate about creating opportunities that again, coming back to what I said earlier, examines how we've done a really excellent job in craft and creating and fostering this notion that beer brings everyone together and really understanding if there are examples where people don't feel welcome in our tap rooms, where people come and they don't see people like themselves, they come and they don't hear music that reflects their interests, how do we make sure that we really truly are being intentional about understanding who's being left behind and creating space and welcoming everyone in and maybe even shaping a little bit differently the way that we're scheduling our events and the entertainers that we're inviting in so that we have just a much more beautifully diverse community um, well beyond what maybe has been traditionally seen as craft beer. So you mentioned you're a budding beer drinker, maybe (laughs) not in terms of a specific beer, but what kind of beer have you found that uh, you enjoy the most so far here? Yeah, love that question. Thank you. So I, I'll say, and my brewers will not love to hear this, um, that I am. I'm re- I really love shandies. So <laughs> we, we don't make shandies. And so what I found is almost every beer is really excellent with a little bit of lemonade added. And so what I'm doing is uh, sour beers are my gateway. Really enjoying sour beers. I found a couple of porters and stouts that I've enjoyed. Uh, but really, what I'll do is I'll order any beer and I'll taste it straight up an IPA. Um, Um, anything that's not intended to have lemonade. I'll drink a couple sips of it, get used to that flavor, and then dump in my lemonade. And I can tell you that nine times out of 10, it's better with the lemonade for me. But someday (laughs) I'll be able to drink that whole beer without the lemonade. And I'm looking forward to the time to to toast with a full beer, no lemonade. (laughs) Well, there we go. (laughs) Courtney, I appreciate your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Maybe just one more time on the overall excitement of this role and uh, being able to implement, um, you know, some of this here in the community. Yeah, you know, I I will say that my excitement, I hope, is palpable. I think if anybody, anyone who knows me will talk about my passion and my excitement, and I, and I, and I, I have that in spades. I think the other thing that I'll just underscore is that this work is so very hard, and that it really takes all of us. And so often when we think about diversity and inclusion work in organizations and communities, we often think about how it is the responsibility of the person that's paid to do that work. We think about how it's the responsibility of our leaders, 
how it's the responsibility of HR and organizations. And frankly, when we're doing the kind of diversity, equity, and inclusion work that I'm talking about, really creating environments where people can be themselves, where they can feel like they belong, they can feel like they're part of something, and they can share their ideas and truly be heard and welcomed, that takes everyone. That isn't the administration of an organization. That is community members being curious about each other, suspending judgment and assumptions, and really being intentional about, like, not being so self-centered and really being other centric. And I think that like, if we could do that as a community, like what an amazing world we could experience. Ladies and gentlemen, if you tuned in maybe halfway through this stream or just now clicking in and you're watching on Facebook, there's a link attached to the stream and take you over to woodtv.com. You're able to view our full conversation there. Courtney, thank you again. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a look at the Wood TV Live Desk on News 8 Digital Anchor, Luke Glasser. Have a great afternoon. Happy Friday as well, and we'll see you around.